Now that we have covered the basics of both relational databases and the SQL language, let's look at astronomy-specific examples. For this, we will use SkyServer, the online database from the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. The latest data release of SDSS includes about 35,000 square degrees of images, covering about 14,000 square degrees of the sky. SDSS includes subsurveys such as BUS, SAG, Apogee, the recent Manga, and Marbles. For instance, BUS comprises 1.5 million galaxy spectra at redshift between 0.15 and 0.7, quasar spectra at redshift greater than 2, and also includes a catalog of multiple galaxy parameters. All the data from the SDSS catalog is stored using Microsoft SQL Server, a commercial relational database management system. The SDSS database includes multiple tables. In addition, views have also been pre-computed. A view is a virtual table representing either subsets of the data or combinations of tables. They have been created to simplify some queries. Most information about the schema can be found on the SDSS website. As opposed to the simple examples that we have seen previously, the SDSS schema is vast and complex, as is often the case for large endeavors. The many tables shown here can be logically split into four main groups. Photo, or imaging, spectra, tiling and region, and metadata. Among the imaging tables, we can note the central table, Photo Object All, that includes over 100 parameters for each object that was imaged with the telescope. To accelerate some queries, SDSS advises to use the views when possible. For example, instead of using the Photo Object All table, the Photo Object View can be used instead. Another table of interest is the field table containing all measured parameters for each imaging field. It also includes summary statistics, along with astrometric and photometric information. Other cases, such as the FIRST and ROSAT tables, contains cross-matches between SDSS and other observational catalogs. Similarly, for the tables related to spectroscopy, the central table is Spec Object All, that contains information about all spectra collected over the years. It also includes duplicates and bad data. Here again, it is advised to use the spec object view instead. As there are many more tables, each containing multiple fields, I invite you to look at the link below for information about specific tables. To proceed with the following end-on examples, we will use SkyServer, a web interface to the SDSS database. You can find this interface at the link below. For our first exercise, we would like to know something about the quasar population in the SDSS catalog. Where should we start? Well, there is quite a bit of information within the documentation that could help us uh, figure it out. So I am now on the SDSS website related to the data release 13, uh, so DR13. This introductory page is where most of the information discussed earlier came from. Here, you have an overview of the data organization. In particular, there is background information about the different tables which are splitting up the data from the catalog. As we are interested in the quasar population within this database, it can be interesting to have a look at the spectra. Spectra are often used during the classification of quasars, and so it can be uh, quite informative. If we look at the spectro section, the tables that we discussed earlier were the spec object all table and the spec object view. That's actually the clean version of a spec object all. So we can see a summary of the tables showing information about the different columns. From this, we can already think about what piece of information could help us find quasars within the SDSS database. One problem with this is that uh, the basic information is a bit cryptic. At first glance, we can see that we have access to, say, the object ID. We can see from which plate the spectrum came from. Um, so for example, here, uh, each spectrum comes from a specific plate uh, that was put on the telescope. Each plate has a specific ID. And each plate actually contains 640 spectra uh, during an observation run. 
And for each spectra, there is an entry in the spec object all table corresponding to an object. And so in the spec object all table, we also have information about the object like the position on the sky given by Ari and Deck, the right ascension and declination, and so on. However, having only the column names, it's not necessarily clear what piece of information could actually be of help to us. Instead, we can actually find some more detailed information elsewhere on the website. To reach this information, we will go to the schema section simply by clicking on the tab at the top of the page. Here, we can find more information about the schema itself. For example, we can find information about tables. But in this case, I actually want to look at the views to find information about the spec object view. So I will click on views. And so here are all the views that are available within the database. So if I go to spec object here, we now have a, a consistent list of all the columns of the table. Uh, which you can probably notice there are quite a bit of columns. There's a, a vast number of them. Um, and so, uh, since I've already uh, looked it up, um, we can look for class in this case. And so here, the class column uh, actually integrates some information about the spectroscopic class, so how the object was classified. And we can see that there are three different options. So we have galaxy, QSO, which would be a quasi-stellar object, or a star. So in our case, we're going to be uh, interested in uh, looking at QSO. With this information at hand, we can formulate a simple query. Here, I select the first thousand objects from the table. I will print the right ascension, the declination, the redshift, and the error bar related to the redshift measurement. And to retrieve quasar only, we will set the condition to be classes equal QSO. So where class equals QSO. So if we go on Sky Server um, at the page uh, that's written up here, um, so this is the default example that they show when you load the page. Uh, so we're going to replace this with the query that we just declared. So uh, select top thousand where the columns are the RA, deck, Z, and Z error from the spec object view or virtual table where the class equals QSO. Um, and so you can actually check your syntax to make sure that everything is okay. So here my syntax is okay. So then you can submit the query. And uh, so in this case here, I'm just gonna retrieve everything as HTML, but if you wanted to get it in another format, uh, you can do so by uh, selecting the proper tab. So I'm gonna submit my query. So here I got now, uh, a thousand row where uh, I've got my objects here. And so here for all of these objects, uh, I have the RA deck uh, redshift and the error on the redshift, which is equivalent to what we were getting in the uh, MySQL workbench, but in a different format. Now that we found QSOs, let's dig a bit deeper into our Quasar population. As always, as we did not specify any ordering in our previous query, the results that we retrieved were unordered. So now, say we are interested in knowing what is the most distant quasar to have been classified in the catalog. What could we do? Since we have access to the redshift via the Z column, we can think that ordering the list will help us. The smallest the Z value, the closest the quasar is relative to us, and the largest the value, the farthest it is. And therefore, we can simply order by Z in descending order. This way, the quasar that is the farthest relative to us will be at the top of our list. So back to Sky Server, we can see that we have the exact same query that we had earlier, onto which I added the order by clause here. And so in this case, we're going to retrieve the thousand most qu uh, distant quasar from the SDSS by doing a descending order. So the farthest away, uh, the higher the Z value. So if I launch this query, so we can now see here that the farthest quasar in the SDSS catalog is at redshift of about 7 or so. If we actually wanted to have only the farthest object, we could have uh, set the top to 1, and therefore we would have get, uh, gotten our farthest object only. So if I do that...
There you go. For our next exercise, let's look at quasars found in two surveys. In this case, we can look at the VLA first survey that we briefly discussed earlier. First stands for faint images of the radio sky at 20 centimeters. For more information about FIRST, I invite you to have a look at the following website. Here again, we need to think about how we could uh, link the two tables based on the documentation. So, what can we do? So far, we have been dealing with the spec object view, which, as we mentioned earlier, is a virtual table based on the spec object all table. By looking at the columns contained in the view, we can note the spec object ID column an identification code for the object itself. Similarly, the first table contains a column called object ID. And so let's have a look if we can actually connect these two using a join in our select. We can formulate a query based on the result of our previous exercise. If we remember the section 2.3, we discussed the inner join. Here, I select again the array, deck, and redshift from the spec object view and we will also return the array and deck as recorded by first. I join the tables with the inner join to get the intersection of the two tables, stating that they are linked on the spec object ID for the spec object view and the object ID for the first table. Again, we will constrain the results to be quasars with the WHERE clause, and we will order the results by redshift. Let's look if this works. So again here, I've copied my code in the SkyServer widget. We can check if the syntax is OK. Yes, it seems like everything is fine. So if we run this query, unfortunately, it doesn't retrieve us any results. So there's something else going on here. Uh, what we can do is actually have a look at uh, what we could actually connect together. So maybe we cannot connect the view directly to the first table. And so, if we go here and have a look at the first table, the object ID says that it's uh, actually pointing to photo object here. Unfortunately, the spec object view does not contain the object ID directly. If we look back at the schema, we can note, however, that there is a table at the frontier of photo and spectro called spec photo all. There's also a view for this table. It's simply called spec photo. If we look at the columns of spec photo, we can see that it includes the object ID, which will allow us to connect the two tables. So we can simply plug this new table in our previous query and adapt the join accordingly. So again, let's see if it works. And so getting back to Sky Server, if I modify the previous query for what we just discussed, so spec photo, and then here instead of a spec object ID, it's going to be object ID. So we can check that the syntax is OK, but obviously it should be. And so now if I submit this query, and so here I have retrieved both on the fields from the view, which is clean data from SDSS, and the first table. And this, by the way, took a little bit of time to run. Uh, I just cut a little bit the video so that we don't wait for too long, but obviously if this is quite a big query, it might take a while to be retrieved.